today I'm going to talk about. Okay, I'm being recorded now. So, hi, uh, I'm going to be talking about the dog breeding industry today. I got the idea because my neighbor, who I love very much, recently bought a dog. Um, the breed is Dog de Bordeaux, it's a French breed. So the name cannot be translated into English. And it's um, basically a mastiff. So it's a huge animal when it's um, going to be an adult, it'll weigh 80 kilos, it already weighs 40. You do not want it to tread on your feet. It's ugly, it's all orange and wrinkly, and it's stupid, or at least that's what my cats say. I've never spoken to him. What my neighbor did say is that he needs uh, to make his dog, Simba, yeah, he's called Simba, um, pull on a special harness for over an hour a day to build up for things, neck muscles, because its skull is so huge. But if a neck isn't extremely muscular, well, the neck breaks, which I, I mean, I don't know Mastiffs, but I think it is a pretty good example of what overbreeding does to animals. It made me think of how pugs have breathing issues because they want their noses to be nice and flat, or um, how Dachshunds are bred to have really, really long backs and tiny little paws so they can't climb upstairs. I do like dogs. Um, I prefer mongrels and my favorite kind of dogs have pointy ears, whiskers and say meow, but that I'm not here to talk about uh, animals. Now, dogs are just like different breeds of cats or horses and even rabbits or hens used to be loved and bred rather for their hardiness, for their strength, their size and their intelligence. Not their aesthetics, but nowadays the world's just gone mad. They choose one aesthetical feature that had a good reason to exist, like the extremely large head of a mastiff is because it's meant to be a guard dog. And um, you just accentuate this feature because the animal is more beautiful, whatever effects it has on the animal's health. Personally, I think that's quite cruel. Um, and uh, I decided to look into the dog breeding industry and I came across a relatively interesting article on um, these animals. So please, if you're going to buy a dog, listen to my speech and then go straight to the RSPCA and get a mongrel or a cat, they're even better. But anyway, dog breeding is big, big, business. It's worth $2 billion in revenue in the US and it employs at any time 219,700 people in the US. So as it's such huge business, you need to know exactly what the facts are behind this. Puppies, little cute puppies, let's say with are bred in what they call puppy mills. In the United States, they estimate that there are 10,000 puppy mills, both legal and illegal. Puppy mills are mass breeding sites who use dogs as breeding machines uh, for intensive breeding. Uh, they're bred in horrific conditions and then the puppies are sold um, in stores, in pet shops, in flea markets, markets, or online. 70% of all breeding mills are illegal. They're on license and therefore they operate in illegal conditions, in conditions that do not meet animal welfare standards. Uh, in, in a puppy mill, a mother, a birthing, a whelping mother, lives in a cramped cage. She doesn't get any attention, love, walkies, cuddles, no, nothing of all that. There are multiple dogs per cage. They live in their own mess for several days in a row. They breed extremely young at four months of age. And once they're too old to breed, they're just abandoned and killed. The puppies that are born there are often ill and have social issues. Uh, there is increased awareness of this, but uh, as there are, is more and more demand for puppies, especially after the, for several lockdowns we've had, 
uh, there's no reduction. Um, there's no diminishing of a number of puppy mills. So there's actually more and more of them. In the United States, 2 million puppies are sold every year, both puppies who come from legal breeders, illegal breeders, and also pet stores. More than 3 million puppies are born every single year in illegal facilities. So there are more puppies born in illegal facilities than legal facilities. 500,000 dogs are kept for breeding. So they don't get any pug cuddles, walkies, bones, or love or affection, no. They're just kept for breeding. 70% uh, of these animals are female. 150,000 of the animals kept only for breeding are male. Uh, the figures are quite horrific. The puppies, Kuka, born in mills are 41% more likely to have health issues. Why? Because of the unsanitary conditions they're born in, they don't get decent veterinarian care. Um, so that's terrible for the puppies, obviously, but it's also quite horrific for a new dog owner who realizes that his dog has a severe health condition and may die. They're also more likely to have emotional issues. They can be um, have social attachment issues. They can be aggressive. They can suffer from anxiety. They can be impossible to train because they were brought up, brought into the world in such inhumane conditions. That is obviously if they survive until they're old enough to be sold because half of all puppies born in these illegal meals die before the age of 12 weeks. Um, now, if you do have a dog and want to use it, use her, your uh, bitch, to breed, please do know that you can only start breeding with dogs after they've had their second heat. After the second time they've gone into heat, they go into heat twice a year, one at the first time after the age of six months and then six months later. So you cannot breed from your bitch um, before they are one and you can only breed until they are eight. Most responsible breeders will only use their females for four litters in their whole life. There's a law um, in the United Kingdom that says that a breeding dog can have six litters max in her life and kennel clubs um, only allow for four litters per dog. But in the United States, there are no laws. Pregnant dogs, um, well, they have to increase their um, food intake by 50%. That's very expensive. A dog who eats, well, half as much as it usually does. And you need to eat very healthy food. And don't forget that 5% of all dogs, all birthing dogs, have a condition called dystopia, difficult birth, basically. So if you do have a bitch and she's pregnant or she needs regular vet visits, the breeders need to also know, so you, the breeder, need to know all about the labor signs, um, all about potential birthing complications and have all sorts of whelping supplies. So you need to read up a lot and you need to spend quite a lot of money on getting all the necessary supplies. Um, I wouldn't advise uh, using your animal for breeding, but I think I've already given a speech on that. But if you do, do bear in mind that it's extremely expensive and complicated and time consuming. Uh, if you do really, really want a dog, well, I'd recommend that you go to a smaller breeder, a smaller breeder who loves his animals, who cares for them, and avoid larger businesses that just churn out puppies like there were no tomorrow. Or even best, go to the RSPCA and give a new home to a rescue dog. They'll love you forever for that. Thank you.